My name is Kathy Shockley. I'm the Director of Programs and Services for the Alzheimer's Association and very pleased to have you joining us today. Before we get started, we're going to go over just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, as we give people uh, time to join us, note that today's program is being recorded and we will make this available through the Plano Public Library YouTube page for later viewing. Soliciting business or selling merchandise during library virtual programs is prohibited. And please show respect for our presenters and one another throughout the program. Participants, microphones, and video camera options are turned off. And if you have any questions for the presenters, please use the Q&A option, the little button you see on your screen. You're certainly welcome to use the chat feature to um, just insert any comments or um, you know uh, responses. But if you'd like to ask a question, please use that Q&A feature and the staff and myself will be monitoring that. We will be having a Q&A session at the very end of today's program. So um, putting your questions in that Q&A box will be the best way to ensure that we get to those. All attendees will receive a follow-up email that will include links to the handouts from this program and a survey that you can let us know your thoughts about today's program. So with that, let's get started. Keeping your mind and body active and engaged is important to the Plano Public Library, and they are pleased to partner with several organizations with resources to assist you. Along with opportunities to learn something new at the library, these Living Well programs will connect you with information, programs, services, that will assist you in getting the most out of life. Socializing, sharing, and collecting memories and enjoying informal conversations are important strategies for individuals experiencing dementia and their families to combat isolation and depression. And today, you're gonna hear from some North Texas organizations that offer programs that support socialization and reminiscing. So first of all, as I mentioned, my name is Kathy Shockley. I'm the Director of Programs and Services for the Alzheimer's Association. And I have the pleasure of being the moderator for today's conversation. My background is in long-term care and memory care. I've worked in that space in the Dallas area for the last 25 years and joined the Alzheimer's Association about six years ago. And it's my pleasure to be here with you today and it's our pleasure to partner with not only the Plano Public Library, but also the two other organizations who'll be speaking to you today. Nancy Cohen, Israel, is the manager of the docent programs and the connections coordinator at the Meadows Museum at SMU, which was one of the first local museums to offer programs specifically for adults with dementia and their care partners. Since it began in 2011, an estimated 5,000 adults and their caregivers from across North Texas have participated in and benefited from the Connections program. Nora Gravois is a licensed master level social worker of 33 years providing counseling services and caregiver supports at the Wellness Center for Older Adults. She's worked with families and individuals from birth to end of life issues. The last 10 years, she's been focused on helping clients and caregivers with management of dementia-related needs in home and facility care. Bethany Ross is also with us, and she's the Senior Public Services Librarian with the Plano Public Library. She earned her MLS in 2012 from the University of North Texas with Certificate in Digital Content Management, and she is involved for developing with developing and delivering programs and services for older adults. And as I mentioned, I'm with the Alzheimer's Association and we provide care and support services for individuals living with dementia, as well as their caregivers through support groups and community education programs. And most of all, I wanna make sure everybody is aware of our 800 
number our 24 seven helpline, which I will drop in the chat. So as you see, we have a great lineup today of fantastic resources. I know everyone is going to enjoy hearing from each of our presenters. And with that, it is my pleasure to turn this over to Nancy Cohen Israel to tell us about this fantastic program that is offered at the Meadows Museum of Dallas. So Nancy, take it away. Great, thank you, Kathy, and thank you to the Plano Public Library for hosting this th this morning, and thank you to all of you for tuning in. And apologies for like jumping my slides in here; I'm just relieved that they worked. But as Kathy mentioned, I'm with the Meadows Museum. We are on the campus of SMU in Dallas, and our program. If I can get my slides to advance. There we go. As Kathy mentioned, uh, it's sort of a two part program connections and reconnections. It began in 2011. We've served approximately 5,000 participants since. Connections will meet in person three consecutive weeks in September and November in the fall, and February and April in the spring. The reconnections program is a 60 minute program that will meet one time each in October and December in the fall and March and May in the spring. We do send out a newsletter to our mailing list about upcoming events. So I will give you information to get on our newsletter email list and you will hear about all of these things that we do. Our average group size is of about 15 people and we serve those with early onset dementia and their care partners. The programs this year, we've had a wonderful instructor for years, uh, Allison Davidson. We are now thrilled to welcome uh, Beatrice Galuban, who is a PhD in art education, and she's actually got a concentration in art museum access programs. So we're delighted to have her coming with us on board this year. The memory care programs at the Meadows Museum are funded by support provided in part by the Aware Activity Fund of the Dallas Foundation, and we are thrilled to work in partnership with the Alzheimer's Association. Now, we did keep it going through COVID. We are thrilled to be back in person, but if, God forbid, we need to be virtual again, we can do that. We maintained a virtual platform from September of 2020 through March of 2022, and maintained hands-on uh, virtual programming as well. So, and we do follow all of the Alzheimer's Association COVID protocols. So if we are told that we can no longer meet in person, we will not meet in person. If we are told we have to be masked, we will be masked. So just keep those in mind. Like we hope we don't have a sixth round, but if we do, we're ready. The way the Connections program works is we welcome everybody at the gates, in the gates at uh, one of the rooms at the Meadows Museum. You should know that we do have free parking underneath the museum with an elevator that will take you straight up to our front door. We welcome everybody with pastries and fruit and coffee, which is usually decaf. I can't guarantee we will always have such an elaborate fruit tray and have cantaloupe turtles. This was a special event, but at this time we'll have time to, for people to visit with one another and then we'll do introductions prior to going up into the galleries, which you see here. Obviously, since we're an art museum, there is always a gallery portion of everything that we do. And here you see our director of education, Ann Kinseth, who's leading a slow looking activity of this wonderful work that we just had on loan from the San Diego Museum of Art by the Spanish 17th century painter, Juan Sanchez Cotan. And it may look like she's up there or writing, but she is in fact not. She is leading a guided discussion. She's having people look and look thoughtfully and look carefully. You'll see on the right, our, one of our interns from last year, fabulous Fernanda Campos, who was writing down everybody's impressions. You might also note that all the participants have a different image in their hand. So what we're seeing the art is the Spanish still life. They were looking at a Dutch 17th century still life. So we had them doing a little comparison. I got up and spoke a little bit about Dutch 17th century still life painting, which is my own background. I will spare you a conversation of that right now. But then at one point we had people looking at both of these and commenting on both of these of how they're the same, how they're different. And what we did, part of the reason why we had the elaborate fruit tray 
was because we also led a guided portion with um, being able to touch, obviously everyone had his or her own fruit plate, touch the rind of a cantaloupe, touch the flesh of the cantaloupe, taste them, touch with the cucumber and taste the cucumber. And even we had quince paste. We spared everybody cabbage at 1030 in the morning, but we did try to make this as tactile and as experiential as possible. After the gallery component, we go back downstairs, in this case, after the still life, looking at the still lives, Laura Mancini, who is our manager of K-12 and family programming, put together still lives on Lazy Susan so that people could see them from multiple angles. And everyone had access to art materials, glue, scissors, papers, pastels, what have you, to make their own still life. And this is where connections and reconnections differ. The connections program is 90 minutes and there's always an art component, art making component at the end and reconnections is one hour. So we just do a gallery component, but we do work hard to do interactivity through senses. When we were first able to come back together in person, we did an outdoor activity using touch. And we did this with the permission of our collections manager and the full knowledge of our security staff. And everybody had nitro gloved hands and they were able to touch this bronze sculpture that you see here, as well as a stone sculpture. So again, very literally hands-on experiential. Because we're on the campus of SMU, we are able to work with music therapy graduate students to incorporate that into our programs. We did the taste, as I mentioned. We are most recently did a program with Aroma, but it was not like your lavender spearmint. We were looking at a painting called The Soup of Europe, which is very dark and almost charred. So ours had like dirt in one and I don't know, burning coals in the other. So it was another way to experience art through another one of our senses. And then finally, we're also looking to incorporate movement with our artwork. So again, full sensory experience. And this comes together with the Meadows Museum education staff. So again, myself and Anne Kinseth and Laura Mancini, we are the entire education staff at the museum. The outside educator who of course will be welcoming Beatrice Galuban, who I've mentioned already. And we've got a group of about five or six volunteer docents who not only help us on this program, but some of them have been working on this program since its inception in 2011, which is fantastic because they know the participants and our participants look forward to seeing them and working with them. Looking ahead, we are off for the summer. We will start back in September with connections on September 7th, September 14th and September 21st. In October, we'll have a recon reconnections program on the 12th. We'll go back to connections November 2nd, November 9th and November 16th. And we'll round out the season with a reconnections program on December 14th. All programs meet at the Meadows Museum. As I mentioned, we have free parking on site. Connections meets from 10.30 to 12 p.m. Reconnections meets from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. Usually we meet in the gates. We're about to have some construction. So sign up for our newsletter. We'll keep you posted where we'll meet. But to join us, you can email museumaccess at smu.edu. That is monitored by myself and by Beatrice. The only thing you need to register is your phone number, an email address, and a zip code. And we keep the zip code information for our partners at the Alzheimer's Association. But this allows them to track how many people we're actually able to reach. You may also call 214-768-8715 to register. That rings at my desk. But just note that I'm only at that desk on Monday and Thursday, so I will get back to you as soon as I can. But we hope you'll join, join us, and we look forward to seeing all of you in the fall. Thank you. I will now pass this along. Nancy, thank you so much. I just recently was able to visit the Meadows Museum for the first time. I'm embarrassed to say that I had not been at the, to the museum before just this last month. It's beautiful, and I was able to hear you present to our group about the connections program. And it's just amazing what you all do. And just to reiterate, this is completely free of charge and there is no requirement in terms of somebody doesn't have to live in Dallas County or live in a particular area. So thank you, thank you so much. It was thank a wonderful you.
And if any of you all have questions for Nancy, please put those, um, use that Q&A feature and drop those in the, um, in the question and answer box and we'll be monitoring that. And it is now my pleasure to introduce Nora Gravois with the Wellness Center for Older Adults to visit to speak about their Memory Cafe program. So Nora. Thank you so much. Again, we also want to thank the Plano Public Library and of course Kathy and Nancy. Just feel very privileged to be able to be a part of this panel. So thank you very much for inviting us to do that. Like Nancy, our Memory Cafe is a program primarily focused on those folks dealing with um, early onset um, Alzheimer's or other types of dementia. Um, the Wellness Center for Older Adults is housed in the Sam Johnson Senior Rec Center. We have um, an office and we utilize one of the classrooms for a lot of our classes and support groups that we have. My presentation is not moving forward. Let's see, we worked on this. <laughs> uh, I don't, there we go. So, um, what we, like Nancy mentioned, part of what we do is it's only an hour. We extend the time into about an hour and a half if there's lots of really good conversation that tends to happen. Um, but we do serve seniors and older adults, 55 and older. All of our services are free, like at the museum. Um, although we do have some other programs that have very low cost for our preventive health program. When it comes to our memory cafe, however, we utilize a lot of the strategies, a lot of the dementia specific activities and sensory, like Nancy was saying, opportunities um, to help caregivers and the person that they care for enjoy an activity together. We like to call it just creating moments of joy, which is something that we have borrowed from Jolene Brackey, who has um, written a lot of books and provides a lot of resources for caregivers, if you're looking for ideas, creative ideas to engage your loved one who has dementia. Um, what we kind of tend to help caregivers focus on during our 90 minutes of joy is capturing moments and glimpses. You know, we, we are so focused sometimes on how much our loved one has forgotten that we may not cherish so much a moment or a glimpse that was truly special and truly engaged us together. There's a lot of difference between engagement and activities. So for us, we really try to help nurture that relationship between the caregiver and the care recipient. And we do that by planning activities. We do a theme a month. Um, so like for July, we're going to be doing celebrating summer. So we're going to work really hard to create moments of connection between the two of them where they actually experience an event. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we try to rekindle that relationship. A lot of times caregivers and care recipients kind of lose sight of the role that they have with each other, like mother, daughter, husband, wife, because the overwhelming tasks of caregiving can sometimes get in the way of that relationship, always being a real positive and pleasant one. So we try to create a, more than just um, engaging in an activity, but help that activity create a connection for them. Help them to be able to experience a sense of smiling with each other, laughing with each other, wind up telling stories about things that they've done in the past or things that they want to do in the future together. And um, just creating these moments and glimpses that they can recall. So what is Memory Cafe? Memory Cafe is our engagement program that's dedicated to have the caregiver and the person diagnosed with some type of dementia have a moment together, have a glimpse that maybe they can recall, leave with something tangible that maybe that caregiver can use to reinforce the fun time that they had together. Um, we want to encourage supportive interactions a lot of times in that role, uh, the caregiver feels like they've become a parent and the care recipient sometimes says, I'm not a child. And so we want to reinforce this equal peer loving and supportive relationship where they both feel like they have a win, where they both feel like they remember why they, um, why they are together in the first place. Um, we do talk about best practices 
Um, Jolene Brackey has a wonderful uh, handout that we've created, kind of putting uh, some things together, 101 things you can do with a person experiencing dementia. So whether it's for the caregiver or for that caregiver to share with other family members, neighbors, friends, church families, church members, um, so that sometimes people say, well, I don't know what to quote do. And so encouraging people to just be with that person, enjoying a moment, enjoying a glimpse of, of their relationship. And so talking about best practices with, with activities that will actually spur that engagement together. We do talk about suggestions, make recommendations that can mem uh, stimulate mental function. So some of the mental aerobics that we can engage our loved one in with dementia, challenging but fun activities, challenging that offers a win-win, um, not reinforcing a sense of, of failure or not understanding, but encourages the sense of just, um, we're stimulating our brains. Um, and then the strategies for engagement. Sometimes the conversations, what we say, how we approach that person with dementia, how we work at getting them involved in an activity or involved in an event, sometimes can completely, just the approach itself, can sometimes completely turn that person away and turn them off. So we talk about strategies for engaging, um, making it fun to brush your teeth, making it fun to clean the table. What are we doing to help have a relationship, a moment of uh, enjoyment during that activity? And then we um, recommend or we practice, we actually do a lot of fun interactive games and activities. We um, talk to the caregivers about brain sparks, about how we can initiate motivation, how we can encourage follow through, how we can help that person move from step one to step two to step three in a way that's manageable rather than that feels overwhelming. And we do all of that by creating an experience or an event that feels fun. So we're trying to provide education to the caregiver at the same time as engaging that person with dementia, um, feeling like they're doing something together, almost like a date. We've had caregivers who come in and even the person with dementia who said, yeah, this is our weekly date. And so we want to hopefully encourage that kind of feeling. Um, one of the things that we all have learned in the dementia world is that folks with dementia will remember the experience of an event, not necessarily the details of an event. And so we talk about that a lot and we, we try to help caregivers brainstorm with the care recipient. What are some things that we could do together instead of feeling like we're always having to do tasks or do chores. So while we're there to have fun and to hopefully create an experience, we also want to educate the caregiver about how they can do that at home or in the church setting or in the neighborhood social club meeting or in the HOA meeting or life events that take place that it can be so challenging. So what do we do to rekindle that relationship among the caregiver and care recipient? Um, we may have a theme about dating, and so we may ask the caregiver to bring pictures of their early days together, where we just remind them how, why, how the husband and the wife came to be, how the mother and daughter used to be involved in activities together, something that might spur a moment or a recollection um, that helps them remember you. I remember who you are. You are the person who was my mother, who was my father, who was my aunt, my uncle, my grandmother, my husband, my wife. And so in that hour and a half, finding ways to rekindle that remembrance. I remember you, um, even for the caregiver, sometimes losing sight of that person um, because they're so involved in those caregiving duties. So trying to get away so much from the care task and the care role and more into the relationship that brought them together in the first place. Um, and then creating connections. We want to help caregivers understand the connection between engagement and activities of daily living. Take away the parental feeling about, quote, keeping them on track, making sure this gets done, um, making sure that this gets taken care of. And how do we create a connection to get that task accomplished? How can you do that at home? And then the person with uh, dementia 
can also feel like, well, when you're not telling me just because you're my husband, because you're my wife, you're my, you're not my mama, you know, you're not my daddy. We hear that sometimes. And so remembering that we're doing that this because we love each other, because we're connected, we're working together to try to accomplish that task or that role or that duty. And then also to help them know that they're not alone in either of those perspectives. Um, it's really encouraging when we have care recipients, folks who have a diagnosis and some type of cognitive impairment who come in and say, where are the others? I came to be with, with him. Well, what about that person? And maybe describe that person in detail because they remembered the experience of fun with that person. Um, having folks be able to say to one another, I understand what it's like when you can't remember all the things you want to remember or when it's difficult to come up with that word. And so playing games even about word recall or, or memory recall or connections. How do I, how can I help myself remember what this means and what I need to do about this? But them talking to each other carries much more weight than anything that we could, we could possibly do um, from our standpoint. So helping the caregiver and that person with dementia realize they're not alone in this. Um, while they have lots of support in the community, we connect them with resources, with services that are available. Um, we are funded by partnership with the Area Agency on Aging. So we refer folks to a lot of programs. We're so excited about our connection with the Alzheimer's Association that we are going to start partnering on some events and activities. And so there are a lot of resources in this area. So it's not about us having it all. It's about sharing that information to create connections on lots of levels for both the caregiver and the person with dementia. So what do we actually do when we're there? I've got my list over on the left side, but I, I, I've pulled up all of these pictures about all the different um, energetic, active, fun um, experiences that we try to create through games, through puzzles. Um, I loved what Nancy talked about at the museum. We try to use art a lot of times in helping folks what does that mean to you? What are the things that stand out to you? Helping them utilize what skills they can draw on during that, um, that particular session, using their hand, using their senses, the smell, the sight, the hear, the touch, the taste. Um, those are all so very important to help create these events. And when they work on them together, regardless of what the activity actually is, they're doing it all together. So they're encouraging each other. They're spurring one another on. They're doing the high fives and the whoop whoops. And just, you can tell that it's creating an experience for them of winning. Um, some of pulling out some of the old games that they might remember, like sorry and the game of life. It's amazing to me how many really enjoy the game of life. Um, and moving those little pegs across the, the boards. Um, art, like I mentioned a minute ago, is such a big piece. Them creating their own art, or them tracing art, or them looking at a picture and drawing their representation of that particular piece. And then music. Um, we know that music stimulates the brain, and so it helps spur conversations and spur connections and spur uh, following through and initiative and all those things. So helping caregivers understand how they can use all of these different approaches to create moments and glimpses. And then, of course, mine's not as fancy as Nancy's was. I wish I could say we were diligent about healthy fruits and vegetables. Unfortunately, we tend to have a lot of salty, sweet snacks <laughs> um, and something to drink for them. But, you know, sometimes just seeing a plethora of choices can be an incredible motivating factor for a person with dementia because oftentimes as caregivers, we want to give them what's best for them. We want to make their options limited. And so sometimes just seeing our snack bowl can be a real uh, moment <laughs> uh, between the caregiver and the care recipient. Um, so that's, that's our memory cafe. We would love for folks to join us for that. We meet on the fourth Wednesday of every month here at the Sam Johnson Recreation Center. We meet in classroom two. We do ask for RSVPs at our phone number 972-953-7669, simply so that we will have enough um, supplies and handouts and snacks because well, that is important. Um, myself and our other counselor, Pam Thompson, 
uh, facilitate Memory Cafe now. And so we are moving forward um, on the fourth Wednesday of every month. And we would love for anybody to come by and join us. Um, if you are caring for a person with cognitive impairment, again, it's a joint activity for both. It's not a drop off. And so we encourage you to let us know. We'd love to see you. Nora, thank you so much. I, I just love how you emphasized um, helping the caregiver to reclaim the relationship aspect. I think that we all have that tendency to get so wrapped up in the to-do list and the, the mechanics and logistics of caregiving. And you're right, then we forget the relational part of it. And so thank you so much for your emphasis on that. I was in fact, just visiting with a support group last night and we had that conversation that it's just too easy for us to feel like we, you know, uh, caregiving is all about doing and not about being with um, that person. So thank you so much. Um, if any of you all have questions for Nora about the Wellness Center um, and the Memory Cafe or other programs they offer, please use that Q&A feature and drop those in the chat. And um, with that, I will turn it over to Bethany Ross. Bethany, I'm not able to hear you. It helps to unmute. <laughs> Thanks again, um, everyone, for being here today. Um, I am going to speak briefly about uh, older adult programs and resources here at the Plano Public Library. i um, going to let you know about some great programs and classes geared towards um, folks who are, are experiencing uh, early onset dementia and also older adults in general. Um, so learning resources that you can check out and things that you can access online. So uh, Memory Keepers is a program for people living with early stages of dementia, or Alzheimer's and their care partners. And the Plano Public Library developed this um, with the help of the Alzheimer's Association and our staff members who facilitate this program have all been through the volunteer training that the Alzheimer's Association offers. And so we are really indebted to them um, and to Kathy Shockley for helping us get this program going here at the library. Uh, Memory Keepers meets uh, the third Monday of the month at 10.30 uh, in the morning. And uh, um, these programs are conversation, conversations um, around um, different kinds of topics meant to conserve memories and to stimulate speech. Um, we hope to allow people to express their feelings, um, have time to interact with others, remember the past, express their personality, and to reduce anxiety and restlessness. So it's a very important time for um, both the person with dementia and their care partner um, to come and just have a nice um, moment to share and to share with others. They, uh, there's opportunities to share experiences with others and it's open to people living with early stage dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, and we offer a resource guide um, for all registrants. So even if you don't make the actual program, you will receive an email follow-up that has a link to other resources that um, can be very helpful. So I also wanted to mention that the library has um, consumer health complete database. So this is something that would require um, a library card. The memory keepers program does not require a library card. So um, that's important. And actually, before I move on from um, memory keepers, let me just drop in the chat the registration link for it. So let me get there. If you haven't already signed up, you can go ahead and sign up for that. So yes, the Consumer um, Health Complete is a rich collection of uh, consumer health information. And that means that it's geared, it's laid out in layman's terms. It's not going to be a lot of stodgy medical ease that will be uh, really difficult to understand. It's um, written for, for all of us. And the interface is available in both English and Spanish. 
Um, this resource provides access to nearly 80 full text consumer health magazines, including Prevention, American Fitness, Better Nutrition, the Harvard Health Letter, Men's Health, and many others. This database also includes a searchable full text for more than 1,000 health related pamphlets and more than 130 health reference books. So it's a lot of vetted um, medical information that you can know is trustworthy. Additionally, the Health Source um, has more than 4,500 clinical reference systems reports, again, in English and in Spanish. And it has drug information monographs. Um, and you also have access to the Merriam-Webster Medical Desk Dictionary. So really all that you need um, to access this database is a library card with the Plano Library and Adobe Reader, which is a, a free app that usually comes installed on your computer. And that's just so that you can open the PDFs. So there's a lot of really great information in there and I highly recommend that you check it out. Um, I did want to mention our program Connecting Seniors. Um, this is just a conversation time for you to meet new friends or connect in a new way with those that you already know. Um, you can drop into Connecting Seniors online or you can attend in person at Haggard Library. This is a hybrid program. So we, we get together every month. Um, it's the first Thursday of the month and we share our life experiences, our stories, our memories all around a theme. So some upcoming topics um, include crossword puzzles with friends on August 4th, who remembers on September 1st, and favorite haunts on October 6th. You can also have a lively conversation at one of the library's online book clubs. And we also have in-person book clubs. So whatever your reading preference, however you like to meet with people in person, or if you're still more comfortable doing things online, we have a book club to match it. And we have people who are interested to hear your thoughts because we know that um, caregivers and care partners also need some time to connect um, with people. So it's a good opportunity. Uh, learning something new is a really great way to expand your social circle and to engage with others. And here at the Plano Public Library, we offer programs and classes on a variety of topics. These programs and classes don't require a library card. Um, you can participate via Zoom. You can watch a lot of our classes at any time at, on your time um, on YouTube, or you can take an in-person class at your nearest library. And as I mentioned, we do have a lot of hybrid programs going on as well. And that's when you come into the room and there's people there with you. And we also have a Zoom um, apps aspect so that people from home can join. You can learn about personal finance, starting a small business, um, you can brush up on your Microsoft Word skills, or you can find out just how to use the library, how to check out books, audiobooks, and magazines um, using a, a, the Libby app so that you can do all this from home and you don't even have to come into the library, although we really love to see you. So uh, we would love for you to connect with the library. We have lots of ways that you can do that. You can find out more about everything that we have to offer on our Plano Library Learns blog. I'll put that in there. Um, we post on the blog about um, arts and culture, early, early learning, students, STEAM learning, technology, reading, everything about our book clubs is on there. Memory Keepers is on there. So um, we're always putting fresh content on there. We highly uh, recommend that you uh, take a moment and visit. You can read articles, recommendations, we have reading lists, and uh, also links to our online programs, classes, and book clubs. You can also connect with us on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram to receive daily information about what's going on at your library. Um, and please sign up to receive SAGE, a monthly e-newsletter that's aimed at older adults. It covers the services and programs that I've talked about and other programs um, offered by the city of Plano. And you can also sign up for Check It Out, the library's monthly e-newsletter. And that's got all the news and updates that you need for the Plano Library. Um, listen and subscribe to learn more about the library 
through our new podcast. This just debuted a couple months ago. Um, you can listen to librarians Bob Lofton and Rachel Izigeri talk about library programs and services, um, get out into the community and talk about experts, about early learning, families, business and career build, building. And they always highlight what's going on at the library. And so if you are someone who likes to um, listen to something cool while you're doing your housework or taking a walk, um, the library podcast is for you. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My email is bross at planner.gov. I'll put that in there. And I wanted to um, hand the reins back to Kathy Shockley um, so that she can tell you a little bit about the North Texas chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. Thanks, Bethany. Uh, yes, um, our website um, is easy to find, but can be a little overwhelming to navigate. And so Bethany suggested that maybe we do just a quick little tour of the website um, to come to find our chapter's website. It is alz.org slash Dallas NE Texas. But if you just go to alz.org, then that's going to get you to the Alzheimer's Association website and it's full of much of the same information. Um, so we're current and you can go to that site and put in to find your chapter location. So you might be tuning in today from somewhere outside of Texas. And just so you know, the Alzheimer's Association has chapters that serve every zip code in the United States. You can search for your chapter by zip code at the alz.org website. Um, when you log on to our site right now, our main picture, we're getting ready for walk. We're so excited. This is like revving up for Christmas for us. So. Our chapter supports seven walks and our first one will be October the 1st and our last one will be November the 5th. And so I certainly hope that if you have never been part of a walk before, we'd love to see you out there. And if you come every year or you've been before, thank you so much because it's, a, it's an inspiring opportunity for those who are caring for individuals, for those who are living with the disease, for those who are advocating for an end of this disease, just to know that we're in this fight together. And so I hope to see you all out there. If you scroll down on our main page, we'll see you'll see some widgets that'll be highlighting maybe some current topics. But then if you slow, scroll down below that, you get to our helping you section. And this is really, I feel like the hub for caregivers where you can find out about um, either watching some of our on-demand education programs, just like Bethany was mentioning through the library. You can watch our education at your leisure anytime. Um, if you, you even receive a certificate of completion uh, at the end of each program that you view, those are free. You can access those easily. If you're looking for a caregiver support group, this is where you can go to click on that. It'll take you to a list of all the groups that our chapter sponsors. Um, as far as other educational programs or dementia care resources, and then how to get involved with the association. We rely on volunteers to deliver our education in the community, to facilitate our support groups, to facilitate early stage programming, such as was mentioned at the Meadows Museum, as well as the Plano Library. We also have advocates these are individuals who work with our sister organization, AIM, to go to Washington or go to Austin and appeal to their elected officials um, to approve increases in funding at the National Institutes of Health for Research, or also to um, advocate for uh, laws and, and other acts that might be on the books that would help to improve Improve the lives of caregivers and those for whom they are caring. So if you go to helping you programs and services, we also have a guided website tour here. So it's a nice little video that a couple of my colleagues put together and it'll take you through more bits and parts of the website. This is our current care and support catalog. 
If you'd be interested in receiving a physical copy of this, I'm very happy to mail that to you. I'll put my email address in the chat and you can reach out to me directly. And then again, you scroll down, we have our 24 seven helpline, our early stage programs, which when you go there, you're gonna find information about our changing gears, our memory keepers, the connections program at SMU, some other online resources for those living with early stage um, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, education programs, as I mentioned, you can see, you can view these at any time on demand, completely free of charge. There's about 14 different education programs that you can watch. Um, and they range anywhere from understanding Alzheimer's and dementia to the 10 warning signs to effective communication and understanding dementia related behaviors. So this is a list of some of our upcoming programs that we have um, scheduled. We have a bi-weekly program called uh, Table Talk. Nora was just on our Table Talk this last week talking about the Wellness Center. We love to bring on uh, community partners to talk about things other than just the resources of the Alzheimer's Association, but all of the many fantastic resources that are out there for caregivers. So that's just to give you a little glimpse at just some of the many things that we house on our website. So Bethany, thank you for that opportunity and for that suggestion. Um, I was looking to see if we had any other questions. Thank you, Bethany, for dropping or you dropped the link in there for uh, for signing up for the walk. Thank you so much. Well, we wait to see if anyone has any further questions. I know that um, a couple of people did ask questions and they were answered. So um, if you're an attending and you uh, you can um, view the questions that were asked. I did want to just quickly mention that um, starting in the fall, the library is going to be um, partnering with the Wellness Center for Older Adults on a new program called Caregiver Circle. And um, that's going to meet the first Tuesday of the month. It will meet um, at 1 p.m. in the afternoon and then at 6.30 in the evening. So hopefully um, there'll be a good time for everyone to um, check in. And I didn't know, Nora, if you wanted to just briefly say what that program is going to be about. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Like you said earlier, I've got to remember to unmute ourselves. <laughs> Thank you for that opportunity to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we're really excited. Uh, it'll be um, community education, but with a conversational tone. <laughs> And so it'll be presenting information with the intent to spur conversation and discussion and really dive a little deeper into some specific issues. And the classes are posted. I believe you have the each month we will be having a different topic that we will be um, presenting and hopefully having more dialogue about. I'm the kind of presenter that likes to get feedback and know that the information is presented is something that you really want to know. And so um, even if you were to ask a question that might be off topic, that is a, an opportunity for us to circle around that, kind of like the wagon metaphor, and let's see what we can do to help find some solutions and evidence-based treatments and strategies, uh, specifically dealing with caregiving, because it is a challenge. Um, I, I, there's a, uh, the Area Agency on Aging says a mantra, caregiving is hard. And so there's so much weight behind that little statement there uh, and so many things to have conversations about. So that's what the caregiver circles are. It's an opportunity for us to provide some education on topics, but more than more, what's more important is to have conversations about those topics. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nora. And folks, if you're attending, um, that uh, the details about that program will be in our fall brochure. So look for that um, sometime at the end of August. Um, and I did see in the chat, um, uh, someone said, I'm interested in Nora's memory cafe tips on connecting. We'll con contact regarding. Great. So yes, definitely look, look for more information to come. I just wanted to give you, you all a sneak peek on that new program that's going to be available. So 
I think um, if anyone has any other questions, um, please let us know. We'd love to um, answer them. And I do have Beatrice is with us. So if anyone has specific questions about connections that they'd like to know more about, I'm sure she'd be happy to answer them and cutting her some slack for being brand new. <laughs> I'll ask a question, uh, Beatrice, about some of the activities that you do there. Um, when caregivers come, are, are and and with the loved with their loved one who's uh, struggling with cognitive impairment, do you um, sit with them, or or is it kind of like guided instruction, guided art? Because um, I know myself, I'm a little intimidated by art, especially if I'm going to be surrounded by all this beautiful art. <laughs> Um, is that something that, that you would kind of help provide education about even how to approach expression through art? Yeah, so um, I'm starting to plan the curriculum for uh, this fall, but I was um, a part of a few sessions that where the previous instructor was from. Um, and so I did get to kind of witness that interaction. And so what I'm um, proposing for the fall is very similar. So the way that the program works is, um, uh, we encourage participation from the caregiver as well as um, the, you know, person experiencing um, Alzheimer's. Um, and so it's kind of a, um, I would say, um, you know, like a, uh, you know, connection between the two. Um, and so it's not just sort of the caretaker, um, you know, guiding um, the, um, you know, patient um, along. It's more of a collaborative um, aspect where um, everybody gets to participate. Um, and so we have a lot of docents who are part of the program um, who encourage um, a lot of discussion and a lot of art in a way that it doesn't make it intimidating. We really, um, um, break things up and kind of break the art, um, looking up into just basic questions of what is it that we see? How is it that this makes us feel? Um, and we always connect um, the work of art back to lived experience. Um, you know, it can be memories or, um, you know, specific um, personal, um, you know, items or memories that the person has. So we're, it's not an art historical lesson where we all kind of have to learn, um, you know, art terms. We really don't need any experience to be able to to engage and appreciate the work of art. Thank you for your question, by the way. Well, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. I want to thank again our panelists. This is really um, information um, great for me. I love to um, know more about what's being offered. And I hope that all of you who attended uh, came away with some new piece of information that you didn't know and um, are charged up to attend one of these programs or just connect and to know that um, we have lots of resources for you. So um, again, if you have any questions, um, reach out to us and um, please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.